<clears throat> All right, we should be kicking off here shortly. Hope everybody's having a good day. It's been a long day for me. So, yeah, so I had uh, dizzy spells two nights ago to last night. So <clears throat> I went to the doctor today and uh, they don't know what the hell's going on. So just trying to figure that out. So it is what it is. And I got my new uh, hearing aid, so I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I can now hear again, which is nice. What do we got going on? I should be on here in a minute. Oh, urban hotspots in the house. What's going on? Welcome to the ooh-wee. Oh, big stands in the house. Look out. Look out. Long Beach. Yeah, baby. Oh, here we go. Uh, uh. Appreciate the support, Stan. Big ups to you, man. I hope you enjoy them, bro. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Let me turn some light on. You, so. Okay. All right. Yep. Oh, Kawan is in the house. Look out, man. Hey, Kawan. There we go. So I, I hope you don't mind, Diane. I tried a uh, thing that I haven't tried before. I don't know if you can see it underneath your face. Um, it Does it say live fundraiser? It does. Okay, so I, I was just testing it out. Basically, it's uh, for the bail project to help uh, folks that are uh, currently incarcerated due to these protests to get them free bail and get them the hell out of there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to donate as soon as we get off of here. Okay, just to let you know, I, I hadn't, it's on my side. I've never tried it, but the way things are going right now, I think everybody can use all the help they can get. So I just uh, threw that up there. So right. hope you don't mind, Diane. I don't mind at all. And all I right. um, Stanley, he said his mom, Diamond. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I have developed such a relationship. And so, hey, son, I don't want you to think I missed out on you. No, he's he's there. He just bought his uh, custom-made shoes from uh, the Uwe Chronicles. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah, they have his character name on them from the book, the second book. So, uh, you know, they're covered in blue, you know. So it's Stan. <laughs> So uh, let's get right to it. Um, so you have uh, created um, Diamond Literary World uh, in 2014? That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm thorough in my research. Man. Okay. And you're out of East Orange. I am out of East Orange, New Jersey. I'm currently in Columbia, South Carolina. Currently in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, well, I stayed the night in Orange once. Huh. That was... I stayed the night in Orange, uh, East Orange once. Really? Uh, okay. That was enough. Yeah, we were trying to uh, save on our trips to New York. Uh, we didn't realize oh, yeah. it was yeah. so yeah. far out. Yeah, yeah. 15 yeah. minutes right across that bridge and mm -hmm. yeah, realize how close we actually are. Yeah. Right. Um, let's see. So you have um, the radio. Uh, you have the radio. You have the blog website. You've got the YouTube website. You've got a whole bunch of stuff going on there. Um, so we're going we're gonna to figure that out. <clears throat> the first thing I must ask you, though, you did a review by Caro. Are you familiar with Caro? Oh, yeah. And it's called Big Booty? Oh, yeah. Let's discuss this book, shall we? Let's do that. All right. I'm interested, <laughs> Diane. The, the show is yours. What do we got? Okay. Um, if anybody knows or is familiar with Cairo's work, Cairo is a is an erotic author um, mm -hmm. presented by Zane, of course. Um, and if you are familiar with Allison Hobbs, then he is like the male version. Um, I want to say Cairo a little bit. Um, I want to say he's a little bit freakier because Cairo gives it to you. 
But in Big Booty, okay, let's talk about, she is a breakout character from the uh, series Deep Throat Diva. Um, his 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 titles alone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his titles alone will blow you away. Um, and so, literally, she, yeah, she is a mother of ten. Oh, eight different baby fathers. Hmm. She's probably still sleeping with half of them. Okay. Big, Big booty is a mess. Um, it's five hundred and forty four pages of just drama. Um, but she will have you laughing like it's unbelievable now one thing i will say um based on the cairo i know does his background um uh research on every book that he does he was giving street names that i'm very familiar with i drive down very often um, he was given uh, uh, project names like the uh, buildings and things like that. It, it was very relatable to me. He uh, some of his characters even come from my city, East Orange, New Jersey. Um, so he he makes it very relatable. Mm-hmm. Now, um, in saying that, the the language or the verbiage between the characters is kind of characteristic of people who may live in certain areas. And that, you know, is, is, like I said, made it, made the book very relatable. I absolutely had no idea what I was in for. I just knew that she was a breakout character from that particular series. So I said, let me go check her out. Unbelievable. But I will say this. At times they had me like, (gasps) you know, the way she talked to her children and allowed her children to speak to her. I was just like. Are we really doing this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, there you have Big Booty in a nutshell. But there were a lot of lessons in this. Um, there was a lot of um, envy. It was a lot of betrayal. Um, she she was very smart in the fact that she made sure her sponsors, if you will, were all with they were all able to sponsor her lifestyle because you know she maintained that her kids were going to be better than her she maintained that they were going to have um a a a good education that she made sure of um and she also made sure that you know they wanted for nothing so you know i can't knock the girls hustle i just you know it just shocked me because it wasn't a lifestyle that i'm familiar with Sure, sure. I, I wasn't either. It just, uh, it just, uh, it caught my attention when you did the YouTube review. Um, I just kind of sat there and I was like, okay, we're, we're going left, uh, like the Chronicles always do. Uh, and that was, that was the, uh, that was the, uh, the thing I was looking for. Now, um, let's talk about your YouTube channel. Uh, you have, uh, well over 380 subscribers to a channel. I've got one. It's me. I signed up myself. Thank you. Yes. So, okay. um, send me your YouTube channel so that I can okay, it's all good. <laughs> it's got one. It's got one video on. It. So uh, let's talk about your YouTube channel. What that's all about? Okay. Um, well, once I put my reviews up, and for anyone that is interested, um, sometimes I know Amazon will take down um, uh, reviews, written reviews. So. Um, and I have them on all of my platforms. I decided let's do a YouTube channel. And um, when I read a book three years ago, someone will still come to me today and talk about some a, a video that I put up three years ago because it's something that they just decided to read you know, or whatever the case may be. My YouTube channel allows me a bigger audience. Um, I have received... Uh, uh, correspondence from people from the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just all over. And all, you know, it's such a wide spectrum. Um, the audience is unbelievable. Um, 
I have people who go on and they actually take their um, recommendations from my channel. I've had bookstores to call me um, to ask me where am I getting my books from because the minute I put up a video, they're calling them like, we need that book because it was on Diamond's Literary World. So I love what I do. I love the fact that I can um, get to so many people, you know, through a love of mine that has been a lifelong love of mine. I, I just, I can't believe that you've got so many videos posted. And that that's not even the big thing. You know, there's the blog talk radio.com slash diamonds world. Uh, I had 287 uh, interviews done so far, as far as I can tell. Is that correct? Oh, that would be correct. Yeah. <laughs> and I've done 11. Uh, and it's uh, almost killed me. So I can only imagine what 282 feels like. Is that a marathon or a sprint? For you, it, it's a sprint for me. Oh. Well, I'll say it's a marathon. I'll say it's a marathon. You know, at one point you figure sprint because it's like I saw a need, and so I wanted to thank you, Urban Library. I appreciate you so much. Um, I saw a need, and so it was a sprint. But then I, you know, I, I balanced out, and there's still times like now, like what's going on in the country. I'm mm -hmm. back in it's sprint mode you know because yeah. people are coming and they're asking me for recommendations and it's i feel like i'm not reading them fast enough to give my opinions on them you know so um at times i would say both but definitely overall a marathon yeah i can't even begin i, I just big booty grabbed me um uh... Uh, and I had to ask about that one. Uh, there is just so much going on on that YouTube channel that uh, if you had any book that you've ever wanted to read, uh, it probably has been read. So you could probably go and check that out. Um, and the blog talk radio dot com. I just got into that, uh, which was pretty good. I, I enjoyed that very much. Um, so you are a jack of all trades in, in the literary world, it seems. That I am. Okay. So which one is your favorite uh, channel to go with? Oh, my God. They get harder, Diane. Oh, no. Please don't. Um, my favorite. All right. Come back to me on that one. That, got it. That, got that, it. that one stumped me. Yeah. Uh, all right. So so let's go with uh, the 11 rapid fire we questions that everybody loves, yeah. because I know we're going to get a thousand uh, questions from the supporters. And uh, I don't even know if I've gone and scrolled through. So there's probably nine or 10 questions that I've missed thus far. Okay. Um, so let's go, shall we? Absolutely. Green bean casserole or green bean casserole? Neither. Neither. OK. Favorite favorite food for that then in lieu of green bean casserole? Let's go with a spinach patty. Are are we are we vegetarian? Um, pescatarian. Pescatarian. Oh, a fish diet. Lovely. <laughs> I, I do I do a pescatarian diet myself. That's great. Uh, long nails versus short nails. Both. Um, <laughs> because I my nails are natural. Okay. So, so when they're growing, I love mm -hmm. them. And then when okay. I start all over again, I'll deal with them short. Okay. All right. Go with it. Favorite sports team and, and sport? Okay. Definitely basketball. Um, if I were to pick a team, I love them all. But if I were to pick one, let's go with – you know, who? Oh boy. Um let's go and I'm just because I love Allen Iverson and loved him so much, let's go with the seventy sixers. Okay. I, I live down the street from the from the bowling alley. Really? Yeah, literally down the street. Okay. Between that and the uh you know, the, the situation that happened in the nineties when the chair got thrown and all that all that hoopla. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm down the street. That's Hampton. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the other, the other three blocks in the opposite direction where, where was the, uh, the, the, um, 
I guess the protest turned into a Donnie Brook because they lobbed the tear gas in on a peaceful protest, so it kind of got amped. So you go from there to the to the abandoned bowling alley, and then you're at my house. So a lot of fun up here in uh, in Hampton right now. I know. Um, <laughs> best way to read? Would you say that's the laptop running down the street, jumping jacks, or perhaps on the couch? On the couch, definitely. On the couch. Okay. Audiobook or Kindle? Kindle. Kindle. All right. We're going to go with favorite food. You said it was a spinach patty. My favorite food is Jamaican. Ah. Uh, Jamaican cuisine, yes. Okay. All right. The favorite ooh question from everybody? Dogs, cats, or chia pets? Definitely dog. Thank you. Thank you. So what did you always want to be when you were growing up? Um, in my early years, I wanted to be, I, I wanted to be a doctor, but because okay. I argued, I was so, I, I don't want to say argumentative, but I stand by my point. Mm -hmm. I said lawyer. Mm -hmm. but now they say teacher. So for me, I'm going to say, I always wanted to be a doctor. Then I changed it to lawyer. Now I just want to be Diane. Okay. All right. We'll go with that. We want to be Diane. Uh, favorite vacation spot? Favorite vacation spot. Let's go with Jamaica. Jamaica with Jamaican food. All right. Makes sense. Favorite flower, Diane? Lily. A lily? Yes. Okay. All right. Do you read the Irish folk music? No, I don't. Okay. You should try it sometime. It's it's a wonderful motivator. Well, well, does it count that I read Irish authors? Yes, yes, okay. that should count. That should okay. count. Okay. Blood and whiskey is is the Irish crime. So, uh, and 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 I I I, re, I regress to ask this, but I must. Uh, favorite writer? You know, not gonna work on this one. Hard. Oh my god, I cannot. I can't. I don't. Mine have is Kwan. I know. I know your favorite is Kwan, and I know he's on here. Kwan is one <laughs> of my favorite male authors. Right. He is one of my favorite people. Um, he's the same winter, spring, summer, fall. He's the same morning, noon, and night. You know, so I love him. Um, but there's a list. Mm -hmm. Because I've been doing this for so long. Right. You know, I've been reading for... I think since junior high is when I really got into book thought provoking books. Mm -hmm. If you let my family tell it, I've been reading since I came out the womb. Oh, but yeah. Okay. My family. I, now I do remember as a child, I don't remember them bringing me toys. They would come from wherever and they would bring me a book. Oh. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, my oldest cousin shared with me probably last year. She said, you came out of the womb reading. So I've been doing it for so long, I can't pinpoint a certain author. If you give me a genre, maybe maybe I can nail it down to three, but I could never give you one. Excellent. Yeah. I am not the, that well read, so I, I am continuing to go to the go-tos when I need to calm down. Although, uh, are you into uh, uh, Mafia, uh, True true Mafia, the oh, the... No. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, Christian uh, Cipanilli wrote a book called um, uh, Lucky Luciano. Uh, he's the guy that you see on TV that does all the, you know. Okay. So uh, I finished that book in two hours. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was okay. rolling. Through I need to title of that book because I need. Yeah, I need. Oh. It was beautiful. It was the untouched version of Luciano. So it was talking about all his uh, affairs. It was talking about uh, some of the women that had affairs with him that didn't uh, that 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 committed suicide in the car uh, <laughs> with the gas. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. He had all kinds of interesting. Uh, you know, I've studied it my whole life for at least twenty five years, and oh. I learned things in that book. And I'll, I'll send it to your DM. It was it was a, it was brilliant. Um, but, uh, yeah, he'll be coming on the show. So there's quite a few people coming on the show. So please um, let me know when he comes on sure, so that sure. I can you know, at least have touched it so I can participate. I do know who Lucky Luciano is, mm -hmm. but 
I don't think I knew all that you just shared with me. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> so I grew up reading it. I wrote a, I read a 700-page prohibition book uh, called Public Enemies. Okay. Uh, they made a really shitty movie out of it with Johnny Depp. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the book was much, much better. It always is. Yeah, always is. Yeah. Um, so in, in your opinion, what, it, what makes a good uh, writer – that you would love to read time and time again. Uh, the the book we were discussing was Big Booty uh, by Cairo. Yes. Okay, I'll pick that up. That sounds interesting. Um, so so, what do you think makes a uh, a really good writer? Um, I believe a writer that will give you um, a great plot. Um, Kwan says the the movie wasn't that bad. <laughs> The, the the beauty of this book was um the beauty of this book was that it actually portrayed the actual people correctly so okay. bonnie and clyde were not uh mad lovers they were mad killers like that's what they did they geared up and that's what they did uh and that book paints them in realistic light okay okay yeah. so back to the question i got, I got perspective um uh, a good a good writer will give you a good plot. They will give you um, characters that stick with you. Mm -hmm. For every author, um, I can give you a character that they've written that has stuck with me. Um, that I've read, uh, they'll ne they'll never leave me. And sometimes I can give you their entire government name in the book, of course, you know. But sure. um, and they give you lessons mm -hmm. lessons one thing i can say um about certain authors they will give you experiences um if it's something that you've never experienced before you, hey that's something i might want to go try based on what i've read i read a book um by a young lady based in memphis mm -hmm. they, they Denisha Diamond. I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with the Diva series. I knew. No, I'm not. Based on that series, it made me want to go to Memphis because you know I knew block names. I knew mm -hmm. what certain, you know landmarks were. You know I I knew you know all right you know the the gangs are on this side you know the the gang. But the way she wrote it, you know, um, so it made me like experience something that I've never experienced before. Um, people have said, yep, Diva series was fire, you know. Um, so, and then T Styles will give you in every one of her books, no matter how, how far left you may think it is, there's a life lesson in there. Mm hmm definitely a life lesson in there like um i'll give you a for instance she had a book entitled uh uh oh gosh the it was um it was by they care oh uh uh Queen's day scare and from the beginning you think that it's about some bad kids in the daycare they were bad they were all troubled but it's because something was going on at home. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a lot. Of, she brings a social issue into almost every one of her books, you know. And these are the, the writers that I'm attracted to. I'm drawn mm -hmm. because their writing just moves me. It makes me learn something. She, in every one of her books, will give you words. You have to ha almost have a thesaurus, you know, a dictionary next to you when you're reading mm -hmm. because she's giving you real life um not situations, but uh, people who who suffer from what's the um, the word I'm saying? Uh, not situations, but um, like a okay, like a condition. Mm -hmm. And she'll give you that, and you look it up, and you're like, "Oh, this is real." You mm -hmm. know. What I mean? So th those are the type of authors and writers that I am drawn to. Mm -hmm. and, me something let your readers walk away with something mm -hmm. i.e a character i.e do you remember in such and such book you know i'll never forget 
I'll give you another one. Um, uh, 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 the candy shop. Well, let's think about this. This woman is a president. I mean, uh, she was a, a principal, vice principal of a school. And because she was following up with a friend, you know, she starts using drugs and lost everything. I mean, everything. Here's an educated woman, you know, working with children. And he had everything going for her. But because, you know, she just decided to make a wrong choice in her life. And that's something that will stick with you. And I tell you something, that is a book that I recommend and I, I've given it to my children. That's the book that actually got my last son who did not like to read, got him reading, you know, because I was like, it's something that you can learn from, you know? So these are the type of writers that I'm, I'm very drawn to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I definitely, I read, have you read C.N. Phillips? Um, C.N. Phillips, I believe I read a short story, but she's definitely on my, on my Kindle. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've got. Ty Marshall's 80s Baby. Oh my God. Yeah. Can we yeah, just. You know, <laughs> Erica, Erica, the narrator who came on the show, uh -huh. she's doing Gold-Blooded, like she's doing his narration of Gold-Blooded. So that comes out in July. Okay. Yeah. Uh, July 15th, I think it is. I yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, and then um, um, memoirs of it. Um, um, <laughs> oh, only because I, I'm, I'm loving it. But um, it, I'm going to be narrating a book very soon. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, we will have you back on the show when you uh, have finished narrating it, um, because I was getting DMs all day about how forward everybody was to this uh, this interview. So um, really? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Can't believe you're having her on. Get out! I'm like, I'm I'm dizzy and I'm sitting in a doctor's office wondering if I've had a stroke. I'm I'm trying. That's that's why you didn't get the video. Like, hey, we're getting ready to do this because I'm like literally like. <laughs> Oh, but I'm good. Goodness. We're gonna make this interview. <laughs> that makes me and and you know, well, just know that last night I was like, oh God, like I was literally praying last night, like please let me feel better. Mm -hmm. um, so that oh, thank you, Kawan. I was like, please let me feel better so that I could do this interview because mm -hmm. I, oh, oh, I didn't want to be on here crying. I was crying last night. I was in so much pain, but. Um, mm -hmm. like, he answers prayers, so I'm glad that you and I are here, and I'm glad that we're able to do it. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. My wife uh, shoved a salad in front of me, and she goes, when's the last time you had a salad? I was like, when's the last time I slept? Uh, it's been three days <laughs> that I've been trying to get all this stuff going. Uh, let's see. Um, so you do the radio host. We have that up there, the Diamonds uh, World. Um, the only thing I don't like about live is that it can't see the comments once it goes back. So I'm going to put in the series blog uh, – talkradio.com so people can see and follow you once they watch it on replay. Okay. So we usually average like 50 to 60 views after the fact. Oh, wow. That's yeah, because it's, it, it's an inconvenient time for a lot of people. Let me tell you something. You, I have to commend you because you are doing a damn thing. Like, you know, I try to do as much as I can. And, I, and that, that's saying a lot. So I appreciate you for what you do. Oh, thank you. I uh, I couldn't be here without uh, the Kowans and Stanley James's and the my love books and the Val from Brown Sugar Reads and all these people that, that you know I didn't think I was a writer uh, and then I I somebody it was Val who DM me I was playing a video game <clears throat> I'll never forget it in this room I was playing a video game and uh, <clears throat> I got a DM that said Yo this book and I just stopped playing a video game and I cried I was like Wow somebody's actually reading my work. Um, so when you're an independent, that's a big thing. And I think you know that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to do those things. And I got my brand new, uh, hearing aids in. So now I don't have to, uh, yell at the top of my lungs to be able to hear you. Uh, so that's a pleasure uh, as well. So I finally got my hearing back after about 10 years. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So now I'm good. I can hear my wife now. So I, I heard, you know, without yelling, ha, huh, 
like six times to figure out if she wanted the trash going out. So that's a plot. That's a plus. So uh, today's been a good day. You know, I got you on. Uh, I got my hearing aids back. I got all, you know, so minus the dizziness, it's been a blessed day. So um, in, in your, um, in, in your, uh, in your idea, what do you think, uh, where do you see literary going? Do you see it going paperback still, or do you think it's going to take off, go Kindle and Audible? Okay. So, let me just say that paperback has never gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. It because no matter what comes out, you will still have paperback readers. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, the, it, they may have seen a decline in the sales of paperbacks, mm -hmm. um, but it's never really gone anywhere. Now, I'm gonna tell you a true story. Um, I was gifted my first Kindle. And I went crazy. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Because of, of what I do, I, I found that I lost touch with the authors. Mm -hmm. I love going to events. I love hearing them speak. I love the interviews. I love the book signings. I love all of that. And I had missed out on that for probably about a year. And so what I did was, okay, there are certain people that no matter what, I'm going to always have in paperback. Um, and then, you know, depending on if I catch it at a good, at the right time, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it on my Kindle as well. Now we do see the emergence of the audio book um, and it's really taken off and it's for the person who is on the go. Um, me, myself, I prefer to, to actually look at what I'm reading. Uh -huh. That's me. Right. Um, and so I think that no matter what comes along, I think that paperbacks will always stand. Um, an avid reader, I think I can say this for most of us, we, look, we like to sit and look at our bookshelves. We like to look at our collections. I take pride in saying that um, there are certain authors, every book that they've ever written, I've had it in paperback. Um, you know, so I don't think that paperbacks, well, I know that they haven't gone anywhere. I think that they are coming back um, because uh, people have been putting more time into reading. That's what I think. Um, and, and of course, you know, example, when I packed my bag to come to South Carolina, I brought three paperbacks. I didn't expect to be here this long, but you know, I have my kit, my trusty Kindle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read, you know, I, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read and I do read several. And then two, another reason for the paperback, um, um, you see the incline of, of sales is because, most Kindle readers know that um, it's bad on your eyes. Mm -hmm. I, so that I could read the comments, it's bad on your eyes. Mm -hmm. At any given time, I'm reading a paperback and I'm reading, you know, something on my Kindle. So, you know, I don't think that paperbacks have anything to worry about. I'm buying direct from the source now. I'm cutting out the middleman. So they, they I'm, I'm hitting up, you know, Ty and, and JM and Cobalt hey, and hey, Stanley and, and, you know, and I'm just buying direct through Cash App. It supports them. The only thing that I don't like is that, um, you know, when I buy it, I try to pay for shipping when I send my money because they come out of pocket just sending it back. Yeah. So I just sent a book to somebody, uh, Shannon uh, Garner. She came on the show and it was like $11 to send that book from Virginia to Mississippi. No, 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 no. Have you heard of Media Mail? No, I haven't. What is that? Okay. The next time you send off a book, tell them you want to send it Media Mail. It should only cost you about $3 to send a book. Oh, well, that would have been useful to know. Yes. I've misplaced my pencil. Media Mail? Media Mail. Okay, and that's at the U.S. Post Office? U.S. Post Office. They are okay. very familiar with what it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And, and, and I... um. 
I, 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 I try to tell as many people as I can. Of course, you know, I go to my, my PO box and I'm literally flooded. I can only imagine what, what it's going to look like when I go back. Um, <laughs> But I'm flooded with mail, and I will tell an author, like, please don't ever spend this amount of money to send me a book ever again in life. Utilize media mail. Um, And I I use it for my giveaways. You know, as many times as I give books away, oh, my God, I would probably be bankrupt if I had to spend $11 every time, you know. I think sending books to people since they started reading in the last month, I probably spent over 60 bucks. Oh, no, no, no. Just media, to get the books for them. <laughs> no, media mail. Right. Media mail. Got it. Done. Yeah. And, Done. and I'm I'm surprised that so many people on here are saying they didn't know about it. Um mm-hmm. again, I happen to um have a good friend who worked at the post office and years ago I lent her a book and she sent it back to me media mail and I I, I called her and I said, How did you send me back my book? to South Carolina from New Jersey for two dollars and some change. And she said media mail. And that's when I got so yeah, media mail. Everybody okay. here, um, please spread the word. I think that's something I might um put up because I didn't realize so many people didn't know about it. Media mail. Yeah, I um I'm going to leave your blog uh, talk radio up there, but uh, media mail it is. So hopefully some other writers will uh, hear that and I'll talk about it on my, uh, you know, this platform started off as writing. This wasn't supposed to be interviews. This wasn't supposed to be anything that it has morphed into, not a clothing line, none of that. Uh, I I was just getting, um, um, oh, uh, I was just getting a, uh, uh, I don't know, prior, I remember I, I went on and I called Stan at home and I was like, Stan, I've been out here. Um, I've been on this live for an hour and nobody showed up. And he was like, man, I've been on a live for three hours and nobody showed up. Get off my line. Get back online. And he hung up the phone on me. So I went back on live and all of a sudden I started to talk about writing advice and people started tuning in. And then I don't know how it kicked off, but I just thought maybe it would be pretty cool to interview people so that they could have a platform. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say this, sometimes, you know, um, you are just talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. But the replay, one thing about your platform, it's going because you save yours, I know you do. Oh, yeah. To be there. So yeah. um, And and I look at it like this, those who are supposed to catch it will catch it. You know, those who are meant to be there will be there. Yeah. so. Well, it's it's hard because now it's starting to go into a different direction where people are wanting it linked to YouTube, wanting it done this way. And I just I hired a social media person. I said I'm I'm done. I, I don't want to deal with that end of it. I just want to be able to concentrate on my people that are coming on the interviews. I don't want to deal with anything else um, because it's 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 hard. I mean, I, I went and did research on you for two and a half hours today. So oh. yeah, you mean yeah. two and a half hours worth of information out there on me? Oh yeah. Oh God. There's, I mean, you have 282 reviews just uh, on your blog talk radio show. Do you know how long it takes to scan through each of those? I can't even watch them all, but I'm scanning through each and every single one. So, you know, just in case you, you solved world peace or world hunger or whatever, um, you know, I got to figure out if that's something then I got to put that on the show. So like with Ori Spado, like literally I read his book twice right. and then created those, those questions. So right. that was a huge one. Um, I've got some other people coming up, like the the uh, boxer, the new Ray Robinson. Yeah, I don't know if he's, he's coming on. Are sitting here and did I freeze? Please tell me I didn't freeze. There you are. Was it me freezing? Because I I've got that was it was me. Yeah, I have a hundred and thirty dollars worth of internet pods in this room. Just well, so it that the, they say that the phone lines and the internet is down today. So, you know, I, I'm I'm thankful that we're able to do this much. Oh, if it wasn't, we'd be on carrier pigeons uh, <laughs> knocking it out. Um, so, you know, you do a lot of research as well. You do a lot of wrench time behind the scenes. Talk okay. about what that experience is since 2014. <laughs> hours and hours. You feel and, my pain. You know, um, yeah, oh yeah, definitely the pain. Uh, but I just I'm just surprised that there was two and a half hours worth of anything um out there on me. Um because yeah, I'm so used to being on the other side, you know. Um but 
I definitely, because it's such a passion of mine, <clears throat> um, but you're right. I try to um, do my research and have something read by everyone that I interview. I think it's very important. I think it's very lackluster when you bring someone um, on a platform and you don't know anything about them. Um, and I normally wait until I have, uh, unless they reach out to me, I normally wait until I've read a book or two by someone before I bring them on. Mm -hmm. um, that way we have something to talk about. Now, um, my intent, just so you know, my intent was to open blood and whiskey before I came on here. But I told you I was not feeling well last night. You don't want to do that. And then I remember what you said about not wanting to open it up at night. You said that last week. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do it. I'll just wait. I was like, but I'll let him know that the heart was there mm -hmm. you know, to, um, to definitely, you know, reciprocate. Yeah, no, it, you know, for me, uh, I finally reading Christian's book was the first time that I've actually read a book in a, in a month. Oh, Besides no. Spader. yeah, because my day consists of telework and yeah. then I have to do an interview Monday through Thursday, 6 to 30, 7 30 every night. And then I haven't written in a month mm -hmm. and I'm trying to make sure Nails' story is written. And if you haven't, uh, so when you read Blood and Whiskey One, Nails was uh, monikered after Kawan. And Smiley in book two is monikered after Stanley James. So okay. when you see their demeanors, you'll see the polar opposites. When you get to Blood and Whiskey 2, you'll be like, uh-huh, okay, I know these two. Okay. So you'll be able to tell me what you think of that. Um, and then, you know, between all of that, I, I just don't have time. I mean, I, I really wish I did, but I totally understand. Um, I totally understand where the famous writers are that can't, I don't even know if they've read books in years because all they do is produce. Right. I, I feel bad for them. And then I start to get into this thing over the last umpteen month. And I'm like, wow, I couldn't imagine doing this. Okay. When you say, because I want to be careful what I say here. Mm -hmm. When you say the big authors who produce... are we, What level of big time authors are we talking? Because I'll share a secret with you. I, you know, people like uh, Kawan and, and, and Ty Marshall, a lot of these guys that, that I've talked to, they're doing audio books. Huh. Or, huh? I was going to say, this doesn't apply to them. I thought you were talking about um, authors who, there are authors who they're producing as quickly as they are because they're using ghostwriters. Those, oh, you know, oh, James Patterson. I won't read another James Patterson book as long as I live. Won't yeah. happen. Yeah. Won't do it. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. So I, uh, I just uh, recently, well, at recent black, so I did not know um, mm -hmm. on this buying spree, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm I bought them. I'm gonna read them, you know. But yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he's come right out and said it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's it ghostwriting is an art. I couldn't do it. Uh, I know several people have done it for autobiographies and those type of things, which is totally oh, yeah. legit. But when you're you have a support base that's millions strong, you you owe it to them um, to to produce like that. That's your job. Like that's like me phoning it in in my job, being like, okay, a robot could do my job now. Well, here's the thing. Um, I believe that the the author mm -hmm. uh, uh, does an outline. <clears throat> Um, oh no, James outlines. Yeah, they he do just gives them an outline. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then they give they hand it over to the ghostwriter. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I've I've spoken you know to a couple of ghostwriters, and I know I'll give you one um, for example, uh, only because this is a story that was told, and and now some ghostwriters are some not all mm -hmm. are coming out and they're telling about their um, experiences. Um, the, and, and a lot of these celebrity books, mm -hmm. um, are, the New York Times bestselling celebrity books are, are you know, ghost written. Mm -hmm. um, Wendy Williams came out and said it about hers, but mm -hmm. the, being Bobby Brown, I totally enjoyed it. Um, met the author last year. 
uh, the Ghost Rider mm -hmm. last year, and he explained this particular book in the situation, and it was like, okay, um, he said it was at a time when uh, Bobby was going through with his daughter being in the hospital, you know, mm -hmm. in the coma, and um, but he had already, you know, been contracted to do the book, so he would go to the hospital every day. Certain days Bobby would want to talk. Certain days Bobby wouldn't want to talk. Um, and so, if you've read that book, uh, being Bobby, uh, um, uh, every little step, you know that he brings in certain family members. And and mm -hmm. so this is how I got the answer because I said to him, I said, "Oh wow, I love the way he invited the." He said, "Oh no, that was me because mm -hmm. Bobby was so distraught." by being with his daughter then i would interview his wife i would interview his brother i would interview his son you know he said and then we would meet on days when he was mentally you know present we go mm -hmm. to a shop and i'd sit down and i'd say to him okay bobby this is what i came up with and he gave it you know the thumbs up so mm -hmm. we you know the circumstances um and 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 that was very truthful, but I do know with yeah, like a lot of these celebrities, they're not actually writing their books. You know who wrote their own book? Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama, and so did Monetta Shaw. Yeah, they that you could tell that's that's them. They're very well educated. Um, he told me that Fifty actually penned his latest novel, but I, I mean his latest book, Hustle Hard or Hustle Smarter. I don't know. I haven't read it. I don't know him to say whether he did or not. I don't know. I, I don't know either. Uh, you know, I, I sit there and I read true crime fiction faster than I would ever read a fiction book. Yeah. Um, because it's what I study. It's what I know. So that's why I could kill Cipinelli's book in two hours. Um, you know, and that wasn't even, that wasn't, I could have read it even faster. I was just taking cigarette breaks. So there was a difference. Uh, which, because, you know, you see me in here, you know, I haven't had a cigarette in about 47 minutes. So that's, I that's. Smoking. I know you normally smoke outside. I know I normally am, but uh, you know sometimes I, I come in this room dependent on uh, what what we need to accomplish. So um, you know, you said that uh, paperbacks will always be there. Do you have authors that you support? Do you do Cash App that if you buy direct from them, or do you have like an invoice process? Or I know you read a lot of books, so yeah, I do Cash App. I do PayPal. Um, mm -hmm. But my favorite way of supporting an author is at a literary event. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to attend not as many as I as as I can or should, but um, I try to do at least three to four events per year, and I just you know I, I stock up then. But uh, and then I'm blessed. Many of you know that I'm blessed to have a literary twin who is on here. Mm -hmm. um, Robert White of Robert's Reading Room and Reviews. Mm -hmm. and he's very, um, and we're like this, like if we buy a book, we, we buy for each other. Mm -hmm. so, and he's been very, um, he gets out to the book than I do. I'll say that. Um, but th that's generally how, so I'm gifted, and I'm gifted a lot of books. Right. So, I try to, um, and I would say this to anybody that's out there. Um, I know that quite a few of you have a platform um, and you are gifted books. Please, at some point, um, support the author and give them away. It doesn't mm -hmm. hurt. Um, I've got, uh, I, and I try to do it on the regular just because I want people to know about some of my favorite authors. I forgot my hearing uh, aids are in, and so Stan had to tell me to back up off the camera because I literally have to lean in on all your past interviews. You'll see how close it is to my face because yeah. I couldn't hear it. So now yeah. I can lean back, and I can hear you just fine, <laughs> which is insane. I'm just sitting here like I'm so used to leaning forward that you know I'm hearing it. And people were mentioning, like, why are you touching your ear? It's, <laughs> it's because I'm not used to my hearing aids being in my ear, so they're kind of like grinding for a minute. Right. Um, so you won the 2016 Black Pearls Excellence Award. Can you talk about that in the remaining minutes we do have? Oh my God. Um, so that was a, uh, something sponsored by, uh, Ella Curry, who, if you guys do not know Ella Curry, you need to go and find out who she is. She is an amazing woman in the literary industry. I call her my literary godmother, um, if you think I'm the jack of all trades, she I I I I learned it from her. 
Um, and so she tagged me one day and said, somebody sponsored you, you know, um, to receive this award. And me, you know, still to this day, I don't know who nominated me. I, I'm so humbled. I've won it twice. Mm -hmm. So humbled. I really am. Um, and I appreciate it because it lets me know that somebody out there is appreciating my hard work. Um, mm -hmm. And it makes me want to go harder. That's the only you, thing. I'm getting you, you're the one that didn't get hit up on DMs today <laughs> about how happy they were that you were coming on. Oh, my God. Like, and that makes me want to go even harder. Right. But to hear you say that, thank you for sharing that with oh, me. Oh, no. I, it, I'll tell you. There, there's, I've, I've gotten a lot of love. I know. Uh, I know Stan, Urban Library, I mean, a lot of them are just, you know, hammering it. And I'm thinking, you know, that it's, it's uh, you know, like tonight I have to get ready to put The Last uh, the last Tribe on uh, ACX. I don't know if you've ever been on ACX as the narrator. You will uh, see on there soon. Good, good. you got a great voice for it. Um, but uh, trying to find one is like finding a needle in a stack of needles. That's and I, well, I had a great one. And it was his first time ever bidding a book. And he was 19, and he's down in Georgia. And his college took precedence, which I understood. We talked several times, and I said, look, the books are more important than this book. You know, get your degree, do what you got to do. So he had to drop out. So I've lost my adult as the book releases. Like, so the plan was in a month that there would be an audio book yeah. ready to go. So now there's going to be like a six to eight week delay on the audio book because I had to wait for it to publish because it was pre-released to ACX because you can't publish it unless it's been published on Amazon. Oh, okay. okay. So now it's been released today. So now I'm trying to go back tonight after this interview and try to figure out how I can get that done. So, yeah. You, I need to have another conversation because I want to know about your experience with ACX. Yeah, you can call me on the phone. I'll, t I'll, I'll DM my number right now. Okay. Um, so we have uh, about seven minutes left. I hate when people get cut off. So let's talk the last seven minutes. Let's talk about where they can find you, what you can do. Let's do it all. So you're on, Diane. I'm off. Okay. Um, for anyone who is not familiar with Diamonds in the World, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads. Uh, diamondsliteraryworld.com and YouTube. I think that's, I, I think I covered it all um, under Diamonds Literary World. Also, uh, I am, I do have the blog talk radio show and I've been taking a break from that simply because um, it's just so much going on in the world. Oh, yes. I just wanted to take a break and just hammer into the books. Mm -hmm. um, right now, um, if anyone is interested, oh, I forgot to mention that I have the Amazon, the Diamonds Literary World Amazon storefront. Um, I saw that. I tried to get on it. I, I just ran out of time. So how do you do that? Okay. So um, I, I, if you go to any one of my channels, I have posted the link. Um, and I try to place it under every review. Um, any book that is read, reviewed, recommended by Diamonds Literary World can be purchased from the Diamonds Literary World Amazon Amazon storefront. What I've been working on all weekend um, is I have a section just for um, issues uh, or, or books that are dealing with race relations. Um, and, and, and that's where I started getting the influx of messages because people mm -hmm. are to learn people are wanting to learn about what we can do so um please visit that um and again I, I i don't know what else to say i just i just thank you guys so much oh yeah you've got quite a few people that are that are, that are you know amped up to see you online i, I mean it's you know I'm, I'm text messages the whole nine so it, it's 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 a pleasure that you've come on diane i know that you are a uh uh, a gangster of the of the reading uh, genre. You are the uh, the the, the uh, for lack of a better term, they say that you are very well connected to the community. Um, yeah. So, uh, are you going to do Detroit Hustling Grind twenty twenty one when COVID hopefully passes? We'll see. We'll see. We will. Def and 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 I know that you are. So we'll see. I've been. It's something that I've been. Um, invited to by quite a few people um and and so i it will be my first time but we'll see yeah 
It, yeah. you, if you want, you can drive up to Norfolk because it's what eight hours. Yeah. So if you take eight hours up to Norfolk, it's two hundred bucks round trip up to Detroit for Norfolk Airport. Okay. So you, that's it. You no, know, if you go to, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys something else. If you go in advance and go to um, cheaptickets.com, mm -hmm. you get a flight that is probably gonna be cheaper than that. Oh, cheaptickets.com. Yep. You are full of information. We're going to have to do another live later on because when I know ready. you ready. know you know I got you coming on, <laughs> chafing the hell out of me. So, um, absolutely a pleasure to have you on this show, Diane. Uh, look, I've been looking forward to this review for for quite some time. Uh, so, um, you know, just don't read Blood and Whiskey before you go to bed. Don't drink like some people do when they read that book. Um, good luck. Thank you. For um, the I just try to give a warning out, and okay. uh, and I'll send you. Uh, this will I be able to read one and then two, or will I have to take one and then take a break and then read two because it was just too heavy. One you'll get through and read two. Two you will want to break. Two is pretty. Two is pretty intense. Yeah, I was in a really really dark place. So. Oh okay. You know my uncle died and all that. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, so Brown Sugar Reads kind of lit it under my, like, you know, the fire under my ass to finish it. So, okay. um, yeah. so when you read that, it's dark. And it's, Somebody it's, said, well, Smiley, they had a full-blown hangover. Okay, so, yeah. 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 And if you don't stand, you'll see Smiley and Stan the second he appears. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he just got his one-of-a-kind custom-made shoes from the Ubi Chronicles. So congratulations, Stan. You have just got your private pair. So, <laughs> okay. but uh, I'm going to go down and spend some time with my wife. I haven't seen her all day and uh, take some medicine and go to bed. But uh, okay. I really appreciate you coming on, uh, Diana. We'll, be, we'll definitely do this again, hopefully uh, in August, because I'm booked all the way through July now. So whenever, whenever yeah. I'm here. Okay. Great. Great. Love to hear what you think about the book and anything you need from me, please hit me up. I'll DM you the number. We can talk offline about the other stuff. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Diana. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've had another uh, live. I was really looking forward to her coming on, as I do everybody, but uh, I really enjoy her. I think she's wonderful. Uh, for those of you that are just joining, down at the bottom is a live fundraiser. It's called For the Bail Project. I put it up there. Uh, this is a bail project for those people who are uh, being uh, arrested uh, around the country, uh, amongst other things, and this is allowing them to provide bail support for um, – for those that have been uh, unjustly incarcerated. So um, it, it deals around the whole country. So uh, it's called For the Bail Project. You can look it up on Google and uh, you know try to help some folks uh, out that are uh, protesting whatever it is that is going on in this country is fucking absolutely terrible. So uh, hopefully everybody could uh, have a good time tonight and uh, I will be on tomorrow again with Papa Sock from Long Beach. Uh, he'll be on, uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to interviewing him. So hopefully I'll see you all soon. All right. Thank you.